Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Meriwether County Board of Commissioners meeting June 14, 2023, 9 a.m. I'll call this meeting to order. If you will, please stand for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. First of all, I thank you for the rain that you do, Mrs. Floyd. It's so desperate to be we're ready to be with the Board of Commissioners to go through the proceedings this morning, Lord, and get them wisdom and discernment to, to make the right decisions with, with uh, the benefit the county, Lord, and glorify you. Again, just be with us and guide us and bless us. We thank you, Pastor Christ. Amen. Amen. And before we get pledged to the flag, let's remember this date. I think it was 1777, if my history read, if I remember it correctly, that the Continental Congress posted or introduced the first American flag. So it was on June 14th, 1777. So let's remember that as we give pledge to the flag. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for all its one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Please silence any cell phones or any other electronic devices you may have for the duration of the meeting. Next item is to adopt the agenda or there is there any need for change additions All right do I have a motion to adopt the agenda as is so move. I have a motion do I have a second second motion and a second all in favor motion carries uh next item presentations do we have any okay next item finance report Mr Bill uh, here we don't have the finance report in front of you I'm sorry yeah, scope, Beverly, scope me for that. Uh, everything is pretty standard. The general fund continues to go down a little bit each month due to the timing of property tax payments that we get earlier in the year. But we still look good. We've got the surplus for the general fund in the uh, state treasury account downtown. So we're still in good shape. That's all I have, unless you have any questions on that. I noticed the ARPA went down about 33000 I don't know of anything we've approved for ARPA for thirty-three thousand. I'll have to I'll have to look and see what that was. But yeah. I'll, I'll, I know we did approve something, but it wasn't that amount. Exactly. So if exactly. you can just let us know why it did decrease. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Any commissioners have any questions for Mr. Bill? I, I think the last meeting, Mr. Bill wasn't here, but we had discussed breaking down the spots and T spots a little deeper to see what was in each category. Uh, can we get that? Sometimes that, that report that I gave you what we've already allocated previous boards and things like that so that we know the true balance. And we know that there's these millions of dollars sitting there, but we've also allocated prior to this board as well as this board. So if we can get that breakdown to show us exactly what we really have in those accounts would be great. I'm, I met with Michelle. Is that what you told me? I met with Michelle. We hadn't had a okay. chance to go over that. And did Michelle mention to you about a line item for strictly the uh, landfill fees? Because on here it says landfill, but that's the money it sets aside for our old landfill, correct? That is correct. Did you mention to him from the last meeting about having the line item added to here? There is a line item where the revenue goes into within the budget. It's not on here as a line item because it is not its separate account. It goes into general fund. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. I was just looking back at our minutes and I thought it was um it talked about having mm -hmm. having to add it as a line item in uh administrator stated that finance bill directory couldn't be there, but she had pulled the number. Okay. All right. Well, anyhow, I thought it could be on here just as the just for the numbers, not necessarily the a separate account, but I, I understand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other commissioners? Next item, citizen comment. I believe we have one, Mr. Michael Robertson. You want to come up? We'll give you three minutes. You've been here enough. I won't read all this stuff. Okay. Uh, did everyone get the uh, email and the, the handout that was in the, um, the email? Okay, did anyone have any questions about it? 
you have three minutes. We don't converse during this time. It's okay. for you to present to us. Okay. Well, in that in that email was a package budget and objective objection objective of what the program is about. It's basically catering to um, SAT, ACT, and ASVAB. And what it does, uh, we have the uh, it is for both Manchester and, and Greenville high school students. And what it is, um, uh, they have to meet a certain criteria. Uh, GPA uh, have to be um, uh, interested in the um, army, one of the uh, military programs, and or have interest from a college. Have to be in the I think it's the ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade to uh, to to get into this program. And the transparency, what the transparency is about with this program is that no money is put to our account. What it what happens is once that 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 student or student athlete uh, reach that criteria, uh, the counselor from each school will contact the board of education. I mean, not the board of education, the county, uh, you guys, and say, okay, this kid deems for this uh, Monet to be set aside for them to go take the SAT, ACT, or the ASVAB. And um, the only other thing that's in there is the uh, transportation and feeding stipends. So when they do go take these tests, uh, these tests are no less than three and a half hours for each test. So uh, that's why the um, money for the um, food feeding is, is in there, as you can see. Again, nothing takes place until that kid meets to reach that uh, criteria. So this money, the uh, budget that you see probably won't even... Um, be uh, uh given or reached that that year if that makes sense what i'm saying any questions we'll talk about it and thank you very much for being here yes sir thank you all right next item are the minutes from the may 23rd 2023 6 p.m regular meeting any need for changes hearing none do i have a motion to accept so i move I have a motion do i have a second motion and a second all in favor Motion carries. Next one is June 5th, 2023, 4 p.m. special call meeting. Um, do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Uh, next item is public hearing. No need for public hearing. Next item are appointments. Item number one, appointments to defects. District 4 to fill a five-year term. Current uh, term to expire 6-30-2023. This is my appointment. I do place a motion to table this until the next meeting. Um, do I have a second to table? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Item is tabled. Next item is appointment to the library board to fill a three-year term. Um, the Ms. Sandra Hudson is a current one on there now. They can only, by their bylaws, do two terms. Uh, there is no one at this point, but... I do believe I have someone that may be interested that sat on the board prior and once they sit out for a period, then they can come back. But if you guys have somebody that you would like, we can talk about that um, as well. But at this point, I would like to make a motion to table this. Um, do I have a second? second? Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Item is tabled. Hmm. Next item, item number three, appointment to Region 6, Department of Behavioral Health and Development Disabilities Board to fill a three-year term, current term to expire 6-30-2023. Do any commissioners have any recommendations? Hearing none, do I have a motion to table? So moved. Motion. I have a question. Yes, this says District 5. Where? On the paper. On the district says 5. Yeah, there's not a district. Oh, but it's Region 6. Yeah, so it, it must be yours. And that's for the behavioral. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want to come up with somebody. Yep. So I'll make a motion to table this. All right. Do I have a second? I got motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Items table. All right. Unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? No, sir. What'd you get? I want to make sure he voted on the one prior to that one. He did. All right, new business agency item number one: agency subsidies, fiscal year 2023-2024 funding request. Uh, Mr. Chairman, y'all have before you a spreadsheet with the different state agencies. Uh, they run on a budget that starts July 1st, so we have to <laughs> we 
it subsidized their budgets, so we have to, to deal with them prior to their budgets starting on July the 1st. We have here, they're either here this morning or on, or on Zoom. Uh, we only have three of them that are asking for increases. The DEA's office, who spoke to you the last meeting, public defender and the uh, the library, and they're both here this morning as well. But we also have uh, the other state agencies here uh, in case you have any questions for them or, you know, they have anything to, to report to you. The first one on the list is DFACS, and I think Ms. Uh, Jester is on Zoom if you would like to speak to the board. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, um, on behalf of Millwood County DFAX, um, our budget request is still remaining at the $25,000, and we're asking to be able to maintain that for our county funds, which our county funds are, are utilized. For Kenya, our you're breaking up. Kenya, you're breaking up really, really bad. I apologize. I'm actually not even in the state of Georgia, and I'm hoping that it can be heard. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, that's better. It's clear. Okay, I'm going to stay right here in this area. Um, as I was stating, so our budget request of the $25,000 is um, to maintain, you know, for our funds, for our children that are in custody of DFACS. Um, our numbers have went down for our kids right now. We have a total of 29 children that are in the custody of DFACS. Um, we have been able to um, oversee permanency for several of our children last year, even as we went through this pandemic and um, not being fully at the office at the full time, we are still actively working towards permanency for all of our children. Um, so what those funds go to is for um, the care of our children when they are not in our standardized foster homes and they're having to be placed in other counties, um, hoteled, um, those situations, we are having to use monies for that. We also use the monies for children's extracurricular activities, um, whether they have some additional um, medical needs that are not covered by their Medicaid, um, things that we have to use for unusual medical funds. We have a county financial policy that we have to utilize if children are placed in another county where the county monies may be more than what Meriwether County would normally pay for something. Say, for example, even if it came down to diapers or something, we have to meet that county's expense to ensure that child is placed in that county and that foster parent is taken care of. So we want to provide as much normalcy for our children as possible um, and allow them to participate in activities and various things. So we are asking to be able to still keep our $25,000 amount for our county funds. Hey, Kenya, let me ask you something. You're, you said 25,000 a couple of times, but it's 28,000 is what we have requested. Is it 25? Because we'll be glad to go down 3,000. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. And I do mean 28. I, I okay. have my letter. Yes, it is 28. So thank All you right. for that. And that is correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Do any commissioners have any uh, questions for Kenya? Thank you, ma'am. Be safe. Thank you. Okay, the next one on, on the list is DA's office. And like I said, you've already heard from him at the last meeting. And I didn't mention, but uh, we won't need to vote on these this morning. We'll vote on these at, at the night meeting toward the end of the month. Right. Okay, the next one is the public defender. And Mary Ellen Simmons is here with uh, a couple of her co-workers. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for letting us come and speak to you. I want to introduce Rick Samper is our chief assistant. Public defender. I'm actually the circuit public defender. Rick um, currently is living in Meriwether County with his mother in law and his wife here. This is Don Broom. She is my circuit administrator. She basically runs my life, is what she does. Um, we are um, very pleased to be here. I think most of you know Ryan Fuller, who is our public defender here in Meriwether County. Um, we have been fortunate, we've had him for 17 years. We started our system in 2005, and he started with us in 2006 and has continued with us this entire time and serves this community in doing a great, great job. For those of you that aren't familiar with our agency and what we do, um, several years ago, 
many, many years ago was Gideon versus Wainwright that said that under the U.S. Constitution, persons who can't afford um, legal representation that are indigent should be appointed <laughs> representation. Many years ago, when I first started practicing around here, 33 years ago, that was done through county contracts. In 2003, there was a Department of Justice review of the system, and it was decided that it needed to be more standardized through a state system. So in 2005, the state of Georgia began the Georgia Public Defender Council. Um, at that point, I was chief assistant. Rick was one of our supervising assistants. Jerry Word was our public defender. Um, he left and went to Capitol Defenders in 07. I've been chief, I've been circuit public defender since 07, and Rick took over as chief assistant. Um, what we do is that we represent people who are indigent and they do have to qualify with us. So not everybody can walk in and say, I want a free lawyer. We have to follow indigency guidelines that are set actually through the poverty guidelines that we get every year. So somebody has to fall below poverty guidelines in order to qualify for our services. We have applications that they have to fill out. If, if they're employed, we have to get verifications. If they come in and say, I lost my job, we get proof that they lost their job. So people don't just automatically get a free attorney. They actually have to be qualified through our offices. And we are audited through the legislature. Our circuit's been audited twice and passed 100% that we do follow guidelines for that. We provide representation then in both juvenile court, which is where Ryan is today. He's trying a case over in juvenile court. Um, he also represents persons through defects, the um, you know, parents through defects that you were hearing about. He does that. He does magistrate court. He does probate court. He does superior court. So he does it all. And it's a very busy schedule. And anybody that knows Ryan would tell you he goes to the jail at night and he goes on weekends. Um, he's very dedicated to this community um, and he provides excellent services. He keeps cases moving, which means y'all keep less people in jail, which is always the objective. I understand that. We don't like our clients in jail. Y'all don't like them in jail because they cost you money. So we have a very common objective in what we do. Um, so he has a very busy schedule, but we have fallen behind in what we are paying him at this point. I know I'm asking for a substantial pay increase, but over the last two, three years, there has been an initiative through the state and through multiple counties that have recognized that lawyers coming out of school are not wanting to be public defenders or DAs. I'm sure Herb probably told you he has vacancies across the circuit. We have vacancies across the circuit. Um, when there's vacancies, caseloads go up, people sit in jail longer. So we need to have more attorneys to do that. The state and several counties have um, done initiatives to increase the pay to be more competitive. We're still far behind what obviously people can make in private practice, but at least provides a better standard of living for people that choose to do this line of work. Um, the legislature about three years ago, two years ago, passed a bill that said that public defenders should be treated on parity with the, the um, with PAC, with the district attorney's office. Um, that was actually supported by PAC. It was supported by Pete Scandalakis and uh, it was supported by Herb. Um, and that's because we all work a lot of hours and do a lot of hard work to make the judicial system work. Um, and looking at, we've received the breakdown of salaries, trying to get to parity with PAC, with the district attorney's office. Many of my attorneys were far behind where the DA's office were because they've been around a lot longer. So they had more, you know, they had more money starting out than what we did. So we've been trying to kind of catch up. At this point, I realize I'm asking for a $10,000 pay raise Quite honestly, taking him to 90000 still is, and he may be upset with me, but it's still somewhat less than what people on his level are at. They're closer to ninety four, dollars um, But it does get him up to where he's making more than people that have been in the system less time with less experience. If he were to stay at where he is, there's people that have been practicing less years, 
and haven't been with the DA or public defender would actually be making more than him. Um, I don't want to lose him for this community. As I said, we have openings in Carroll, Coweta, and Troop currently. We have ones in each of those offices that have been open for over a year. We're not getting applicants. Um, Ryan is dedicated to this community. We need him in this community. He serves you very well. I want to make him feel that he, he's appreciated for the service that he does provide. And so I'm asking that you would give him the $10,000 raise. Um, he, the state for all state employees gave a $2,000 raise, but for attorneys, they gave substantially more, both through the DA's office and through the public defender's office. Again, to try and attract people and retain people instead of us losing them. Um, so there is a $2,000 request for increase for our county, for our administrative, administrative assistant here, Marianne Behrens, who also lives in Meriwether County. Um, and that's just to keep in line with what everybody else was getting through the state, but also through all the other counties in the circuit. Because I actually handle all, as Theron Gay can tell you, if he's seen me in multiple places, I handle all five counties. So I do this budgets in all five counties. So I try and keep everybody pretty much on a parity with each other. I realize this is a rural county. I do recognize that. I, I very much appreciate that. And I do that we have heard county that is in very much the same thing. But at the same time, we've got to have stability within our offices to be able to keep providing our services. So it looks like from last year, though, the budget increase request is $30,620 total. The part of that is, um, thank you for asking that, is because the $10,000 raise, there is taxes and benefits that go on that. So that comes up to the $154,417. Um, the, there is the administrative fee here that's 5%. That's $10,809. That has been waived by our agency for the last five years. I always put that in there so that you're aware that other counties are paying that 5% fee. That goes- Let me ask you this, taxes. Yes. Are you asking us to pay their taxes? Well, I mean, it's just like if they were a county employee, you would be paying their taxes and benefits. It is an employer cost. There's an employer cost. If you hire a county employee, you have your employer match of FICA, taxes, health insurance, and retirement. And that's what that percentage is. Pretty high percentage. Yeah. And it's 71.5% uh, just for taxes and benefits of the salary. I mean, I'll, I'll say this, Mary Ellen. In 2021, we gave $4,300 increase. 2022, a $3,600 increase. Last year, 12600 And this year, we're being asked to increase that by almost $31,000. And, and I'm not denying that. I'm very much aware y'all have. I'd be curious as to what next year holds. <laughs> I'm hoping that next year would be maybe a 2000 for each employee. I am trying to get Ryan up after having gotten the breakdown. And I can show you I have it no, with I understand me. it. It's just and, a huge increase. It is a huge increase, and I very much recognize that. But when I got the breakdown and realized that I had employees that were so far behind, and I then start risking that I can lose employees, um, I felt like I needed to come in and say, but like I said, technically, he should be at a 94 level. I'm not trying to do that. Now, next year, we may only get 2000 in a pay raise, and I would ask at that point for that. I'm not going to be coming in asking for another $10,000 jump. This is simply because I need to get him where he's not behind people that are less qualified than he is. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I kept hearing you say 10,000, 10,000, but it, it's that the salary is part, but yes, then you've got, like I said, for any employees, there's the benefits and then the 2000 for Marianne, but we are willing to, um, do away with that 10,809. So you could subtract that out. I just, that usually all the other counties pay that um, across the state. The reason being it covers computers, it covers trainings. We have to attend trainings, get um, continuing legal education. It covers all of that for all of the um, county employees, uh, county funded employees. But the state office, GPDC, we negotiated that. I think, Bill, wasn't it you that negotiated that? Or was it there? And one of y'all did that. 
that the state had agreed that they would waive that fee for Meriwether County, recognizing that it's a more rural community and it's more important for y'all to fund our employees than that. Well, let me ask you, if that were to be waived, would she still get that increase from somewhere else? I don't understand. Or administrative assistant. You said the 10000 the 5% administrative fee mm -hmm. benefits, if that's gone away, would y'all still be able to subsidize that if we didn't? No, no, no. That, he will still be able to go to trainings and he will still get, in fact, they just got new computers, I think a year or two years ago. About a year, ago. About a year and a half ago, they just got new computers. That comes out of state funds. Y'all don't pay for that. Um, he goes to trainings and he, you know, all of that is covered okay. um, through there. Um, additionally, so you know, the state also does pay for the investigator that provides investigative services for our office. Um, that's Hugh Howard. He actually is shared between Meriwether and, and Heard County, but that's state funded that y'all don't have to pay. And they also cover for all conflict cases in Superior Court. So, Mr. Chairman, if you'll notice, that 10000 is not in the request already. Yeah, I did. So that's um, so going through the math, there's a $30,620 increase. Regardless. 10000 is for the salary of the PD, 2000 for the admin assistant. Then the taxes at that rate right. on here is another eighty five eighty eight. Still leaves us with 10000 some odd dollars, 9000 something dollars that are unaccounted for. Well, without the 5%, yeah. Yeah. And that five, that, that math doesn't add up. That's less than what this 10809 is. But what we're saying is what we have here, Mary Ellen, is a layout, and it's the request of 216,000. Um, the 216,184. Right. And that is what we show as your request this time. Did I do my math wrong? And that's wrong? still a $30,000 increase? Yes. And that's where I was getting confused, too, with the administrative fee, too. And then we have down here total personnel cost, 226993 And that, it would really just be the 216184 Which is still 30000 Yes. So without the 10809 5% administrative fee out of there, it's still two sixteen. So we're still missing $10,000 somewhere in our calculation as to where it's going. And we just need an explanation of what is it. Right, because ten thousand for his increase, and I mean, you can send it back to us because we're not. I'll send it back today. to you. I may have calculated. I'm not very good at uh, neither accounting. Are Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I will go back and double double check. What I'm asking for is the ninety thousand for him, the thirty six for her, and I will compute the new amount as far as the taxes and benefits. Okay, and make sure that number is correct, and I will email that back. You'll have it by noon. Okay, and then she'll just. It to us. Yeah. And, and can we see that breakdown of the regions for the public defenders based on region, the salaries? Just um, out of my curiosity. I'm so what I have, and I don't have the spreadsheet. Ours is now, sorry, I've knocked somebody's off. Ours now follows PACs. We, I am waiting for the newest one from Georgia Public Defender Council, but ours is now tracking with PAC. Can I approach? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, We're not judges. Come on up. Right. <laughs> Perfect. So this is where I'm talking about. He is a level three attorney based on his over 20 years experience and 17 years with the agency. He should be following in more as a level as a step five because they just got step increases. Mm -hmm. I'm actually asking for somewhere up here because I realized the council has already a huge tax to make instead of the 94 tax. And I'm more than trying to believe this. I was speaking more to the fact that you said you analyzed the salaries of him for Meriwether County versus the surrounding counties. Where does he fall in based on the population, the caseload, and those things? Okay, and you're talking about population, caseload. I mean, we have multiple attorneys in our other counties in Carroll County and True. Mm -hmm. Like we have six, step back here, we have six Superior Court attorneys for, um, we have five in Troop. We have five, well, supposed to have five in Coweta. Um, supposed to have six. Sorry, we're down position. So I, we have to remember, oh, we still have that position. We have six in Carroll. We have one in Heard. 
Um, so then I have to go through and look at, and we do this, Dawn and I do this each year. And we also compare it with people in the DA's office of how many years have they been practicing, but then also how many years have they been within either the public defender or the DA's office. I, I mean, I've, the only way I can get the actual earnings of a DA is to go on open gov and that's a year behind. So that's the only way I can get. I mean, when I've asked her, do you want to share to me what you pay all your employees? I pretty much get a resounding no. Um, I do know what his budgets are. I do know what I am seeing that the others are making. I can tell you based on what I know that I have attorneys at where Ryan has been practicing over 20 years and been with us 17 years, um, that I have attorneys that have been practicing around 15 and 16 years, been with us about 14 or 15 years, and they're up around the 85, 88 mark. So when you see that I'm trying to get him to 90 to where he's not below what somebody with less experience has, does that help? Um, I just like to see it. Okay, I understand so, everything you're saying. I just so what like what do you it. want? Are you wanting to see what all my employees make? Is that what you're asking? Oh, okay. I want to see the, the how you came about what his increase should be compared to everyone else at, at his level. Okay, I mean I, I can type it up explaining what I just did and using the pack numbers too. If you'll just get us the numbers and break it down more than sure. and the pack yeah. stuff will be good to go. Yeah. That's fine. I will have you something. I've got to be in court when I get back. Um, so that will take me a minute longer to do. Can I get that to y'all tomorrow? We're not voting on it for a little while. So okay. you get it to us when you have time. Perfect. I just, I didn't want y'all thinking I'd have that to you by noon because I do have to be in court when I get we back. We expected so. that by 11. <laughs> okay. No problem. I'll tell Judge Simpson. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always good to see y'all. Okay. Yes. Hey, Matt, uh, Mr. Chair, so, what? Uh, the health department is next, and I think Teresa is on the Zoom call. Yeah, they're not requesting any increase. They're not requesting an increase, but in case you got any questions for her. Heather, do you have any comments you want to make? Or is it Teresa? Teresa McDaniel. Teresa. Yes. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Teresa McDaniel with District 4 Public Health, and I'm representing the Meriwether County Health Department, which falls within District 4. Um, and as Mr. Gregory said, we're just asking for stable funding to subsidize our budget with our fee revenue and our state grant aid revenue that we get each year. Um, for those of you who don't know, while I'm on here just for a minute, the services that we provide are preventative health care, such as immunizations. We treat STDs, TB, and we educate the public in preventive health care. We also provide the um, environmental health services, such as the sewage um, inspections, uh, water testing, swimming pools, et cetera. And we also have the vital records department in the health department as well. All right, thank you very much. Any commissioners have any questions? Have a good day. You too. Thank okay. you, Tracy. Go ahead, Mr. B. Uh, the library. Uh, uh, three next. rivers, right? Cynthia is here. Okay. Come on up, Miss Cynthia. Good morning. Good morning. I am Cynthia Kilby. I'm the library director for the Pine Mountain Regional Library System. We serve Meriwether, Talbot, Taylor, and Upson counties. Oh, oh, okay. You look like you had a question. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we have two libraries right here in Meriwether County. We have one in Manchester and we have one here in Greenville. Does do any, I'm curious, do any of you know where the library in Greenville is? Good. That's wonderful. For those of you that don't, it's right down the hill from the Board of Education across from the Baptist Church down there at the bottom of the street. Um, I'm going to give you a brief overview of how the library is funded here in Meriwether County, which is the main library, is there in Manchester, and we oversee all of the branches. We have seven branches. We oversee all of them there. The city of Manchester, the Board of Commissioners, the Board of Education, and the city of Greenville provide funding for the libraries here in Meriwether County. 
The city of Greenville, their funding goes all towards the Greenville Library. The city of Manchester, their funding goes all towards the Manchester Library. And then the Board of Ed and you all goes to support both of the libraries. Now, because the main library is there in Manchester, we receive funding from the Georgia Public Library Service, which is the state library. They pay my salary, they pay my librarian's salary, and they pay for my business manager's salary. They also give us some materials money that we use to purchase books for all four of our counties. And then we also rely on local materials funding that you all provide to help provide materials for our county as well. This year, I'm asking for a $5,000 increase because the insurance that we provide our employees is going up. And this is the first time in probably about 10 years that they have given us a rate hike. So right now we're paying $10,116 per employee. I have three local employees who are eligible for health insurance and who receive health insurance. So that in January is going to go up by, just a minute. Um, it will increase to $11,616 per employee, which is $1,500 per employee. Then they're, they're, they're going to increase it again in fiscal year 25, so I'll be back next year. It will be up to, just giving you a heads up, and then it'll be $3,000 per employee. Fiscal year 26, it'll be $2,922 increase per employee. Fiscal year 27, it'll be about a $1,400 increase per employee. I know. The, by fiscal year 27, it's going to be $18,960 per employee. For some of our employees, that's getting darn close to what their salary is right now because the, the salaries are low. And I had wanted to ask for an increase for salaries this year, but I found out about the health insurance increase. So that's why I'm asking for that. But the money that you provide, all for those of you that don't know, also goes to support, you know, obviously, the local salaries to also to purchase materials. But it also goes to support our summer reading program and our children's programming activities. Our summer reading program is going on right now. Yesterday, we had a magician come into the Manchester Library and the Greenville Library. The meeting room was packed with kids. They love this guy. So we're getting kids in there. It's fun, and but we're also promoting reading. And so we're, we're sneaking in on the kids. They don't realize that's what they're doing. They're learning about reading. But it also prevents the summer slide because these kids are coming in. They're, they're reading. They're reading what they want to read. They're not having to read what the school's telling them to read. And by the time they get back in school in August, if they've been coming to the reading program, then their reading skills have not slid over the summer and they don't have to reread everything that they have lost or relearn. I, I apologize. Relearn everything that they've lost during the summer. Now, I, I tried to keep it brief. Do you all have any questions for me? I'd be happy to answer them. Any commissioners? All right. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. We Thank appreciate you. your support. Good seeing you again. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Oh, it's not my... uh, the last one, and certainly not least, is our county agent, Ashley Farm. Come on up, Ashley. She's not asking for an increase, but she's going to bring you up to speed on what's going on. Well, when I pulled in this morning, Mr. Yes. Bill called me and said, I hope you're ready for your presentation. Well, 4-H agents are always ready for a presentation. <laughs> That means everyone has to get up and we'll go out and get in a circle. And, um, so I think I know all of the new, I've met all of the new commissioners, um, but thank you for your support. Hopefully y'all have all enjoyed some Vidalia onion since the last time I saw you. Um, 4-H is even busier in the summertime than we are during the school year. I took a group of um, seventh and eighth graders to camp last week. Um, we had a great time at Camp Fortson, and I will take 34 H'ers on Monday morning to Rock Eagle. So if you have nothing to do next week, pack your bags. The bus will pick us up at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Um, but do y'all have any questions for me? I don't have anything else. We don't. Thanks. Oh, another important thing. August 1st, we will have an ag agent. All right. And maybe at our August meeting, I'll come and introduce our new ag agent. So right. just will this one stay more than six months? I sure hope so. Yeah. And they're not, they're from right here. Okay. 
I mean, they're not from Meriwether County, but they're from like right across the line. Any so. commissioners have any questions for Ash? Or, <clears throat> do y'all offer, because I'm the counties I came from before I came here many years ago, especially in Florida and Coweta County, <clears throat> they were big in the, the 4-H wine show, steer show and so forth. Are we doing that here in Meriwether County with any of the schools at all? We do not have a livestock program. I would love to have a livestock program. I came from I came from Tift County, so we had a huge livestock program before I came to Merriweather. We just don't have the interest. Um, Mr. Emmett can tell you when I first got here, I had a livestock interest meeting and we had probably 20 families. It all sounds great until they find out how much it costs to to feed an animal. Um, so Maybe uh, one day. Since we're a more yeah. rural county, and, and yeah. but I was just wonder if y'all was offering it, or even to any of the. You know. I mean, we 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 would offer it if we had it, but we just don't have the interest. Um, it sounds good until they see the bottom line. So. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Mr. Bill, anything else? That's it. Again, we will uh, ask the board to vote on the next meeting. Next meeting. And sorry, this will be a uh, can I Yeah. So you said next meeting. So our, I think you said this in the beginning. When will so that I can let UGA know that because our contract is up June 30th. Correct. We'll let you know before Okay. So I can get the sign. Yours didn't change. I don't foresee your problem. Do y'all? Yeah. yeah, we'll get you can say well, you can say yes, Ashley. You can let them know. Well, no, I, I I can say yes, but I just need the signatures. I'll sign it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Next item, jail roof proposals. <clears throat> Chairman and board, uh, Mr. Theron Gay is here, our special projects manager. Um, he has been very hands-on with this um, proposal and He's going to report with this. He actually met with a couple of commissioners to go over it. Um, and if if you want to, if not, yeah. I will. I, I'm going to copy. Oh, here you go. Morning. Here. Morning. Yeah. Theron, you can sit and use Bill's mic if you need to. Yeah. Do the start. Got the glasses of all ready to go. <laughs> okay. For per the direction of the Board of Commissioners, of course, we sent out a request for proposal for the roof replacement at the Meriwether County Jail and the jail annex, we split them into two different projects. We had a mandatory pre-proposal meeting on site on the, uh, one o'clock on May the 18th, and proposals were accepted until two o'clock, May the 26th. Two proposals were received. We had three people come to the pre-proposal meeting, but we had uh, two proposals that were received in a timely manner. They were open, read aloud, Board by County staff. Present for the opening was Commissioner Emmett Collins, uh, uh, Michelle, your administrator, uh, Allison, your deputy clerk, myself. And uh, the third proposal we had was delivered, but it was after the two o'clock deadline. It was not open or considered. Once received, both proposals were reviewed by county staff to ensure compliance with the RFP and determine the proposal was qualified to perform the work. Uh, and we have checked the references. I checked some, Michelle checked some, and uh, the recommended menu company, I'll get to it in a minute, was uh, uh, their references were really good, really good. Uh, the proposed work and material for both companies was almost identical, with both quoting a 60 mil TPO membrane over an R25 insulation board manufactured by a known material supplier. They used, they had different companies, but both of them were recognizable names. Warranties were both were 20 year, no dollar limit coverage. And while the ongoing maintenance contract uh, is not required, I would recommend seriously that the county look at that to assure that 20 year warranties are not breached. And uh, it's relatively cheap. And uh, I'll cover that in just a moment as well. On June the tw uh, 7th, uh, Michelle Irizarry, the administrator, and I met with Commissioner Collins and Commissioner Worsley. They were they had volunteered to uh, look over the proposals for us and with us. And we met to uh, present our findings, discuss the recommendations. 
And uh, there were two major points of consideration coming out of the meeting. Of course, cost is always one of those. But in this case, you know, cost wasn't the only factor. And the other difference in there was the method of roof attachment. So we had to do some research on that. The company with the lowest cost for the work proposed a mechanical attachment system, while the other planned on using an adhesive attachment. Uh, to be sure that we were getting the very best product for investment, we contacted the companies to discuss that. And we also discussed uh, questions that were not answered in the proposal. And, uh, and we researched the difference in mechanical versus adhesive attachment to, to find if one methodology was superior to the other. And what we found was that about 80% of the TPO projects use a mechanical attachment because it's less expensive, allows a faster completion time, is not weather dependent. Both mechanical and adhesive applications have their advantages and disadvantages, but neither is inherently superior to the other. Both are proven application methods and carry the same warranty. Uh, consider these facts, our recommendation and the recommendation uh, of the committee was to award the project to ACR, Alpha Commercial Roofing, for the jail only at this time. We feel like we just needed to do some more work and look at that annex but, uh, before we move forward with it. The uh, quoted price on this, which was some $75,000, $80,000 less than the second one, is uh, 208 40904 That was a quoted amount, and we have to add a 3% bond in there. There was some mix up of whether or not a bond needed to be included, so they did not include it. That brings it to a total of 214 661 uh, when I called them to ask them about the bond, uh, they indicated they had not included it, but they did say that they would give us the first year maintenance contract at no cost offset some of that. And subsequent year maintenance contracts are $1,500 a year. And they would come out a couple of times. They would make sure the, you know, the edges of the gutters and the leaves are all removed. And anything that looked like it, um, you know, maybe starting to deteriorate or any problems, they'll go ahead and fix those while they're there. They'll help us maintain that long, uh, long term. Other information, just for the board's consideration, seventy-eight thousand dollars less than the second proposal. Materials would be on site uh, approximately thirty days from now, and they would take two to three weeks removal of the installation, depending on weather. They understand that they're going to have to work this in, you know, um, in phases where they can uh, be sure that the jail could could stay open. And I've already talked to the sheriff and uh, the chief deputy, and they are they understand they'll have to move some of these prisoners around and work with us on this, and they are fine. So we're we'll answer any questions you guys have. We got a file folder about yay thick on this. If any of you get really bored and want to read some more of it, uh, what would be the annex. What annex the, is that? No, no, no. I know what the annex well, is. One hundred and nine, one hundred and ten thousand. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's that's about where it is in terms of cost. And so our recommendation again would be ACR, their references. They've done some work for Manchester and they were very, very pleased. They've done some work for Jackson County and they said, oh yes, we'd get them back in a heartbeat. So uh, they were very timely. They came in on budget or under budget and they came in ahead of their schedule time. And has a 20 year warranty. Have a 20 year warranty. And do we have to fill out the warranty? Or do they? That we'll make sure that we get a one way or another that gets filled out. It's a two. It's a the company the installer will do it two years. Then after that, it goes back over to the manufacturer. But the manufacturer will actually send out a representative to make sure that it's been properly applied. And one of the the things with this that we wanted to do was not just patch over what is there. So this is going to be stripped all the way down. It's going to have new flashing. It's going to have new uh, coverage at the parapet walls. All of these things where there's, there, it's almost like putting on a brand new roof. And they'll come in with that. Uh, That's all the insulation too. I'm yeah, sure. all the insulation will be done. Uh, they go, they go have it with, uh, with R25 board. Uh, the board is, is quite interested. The, uh, the board that they're putting in, uh, and I don't think it'll come into play on the jail, but it would on the annex. <clears throat> that, that is kind of a, a long wedge shape so they could actually create right. positive drainage from, you know, the center of the roof or whatever by using this, this type of, uh, you know, uh, foam, foam board that would, uh, you know, drain the water and create drainage. But um, everything we read about them, 
seems like they're the real deal. I think the other company was too, uh, but they had kind of concentrated on larger projects. They'd done the, uh, water robins and other things. And uh, this company has worked and done projects several times for Jackson County because so they keep getting them back in. And I think Manchester would be glad to get them back in too. They, they were very proud of the work they've done there. So that would be our recommendation uh, uh, to Warden. We could get all the paperwork together and uh, bonds, everything we'd need, contracts, conditions of the contract. You said material on the ground in 30 days. How long did they project it would take to complete it? Once? Two, two to three weeks. The other company didn't quote a time, but they said once we get it on the ground, get it delivered, two to three weeks. Any commissioners have any questions? If approved, how long will it take for us to give them the go-ahead? Uh, we'll call them uh, this afternoon or tomorrow and say, hey, we're ready to roll, and uh, you need to get going. You need to get all the bonds and everything in for us, and uh, hopefully go ahead and get the materials rolling. And they're also going to put in a uh, uh, where you have the mechanicals and HVAC on the roof. They're going to put in, uh, I think it's going to be a different color. It's maybe like a yellow color. They'll put in a, a little walk track to go out to those which gives you extra thickness there and that helps save on the wear and tear and whoever's up there working on the mechanicals can just access it by that little walking area. So I thought that was a pretty good, uh, pretty good idea too. And who sees to it on the warranties filled out this time, that company or the county? Both. <clears throat> Both of us will be sure. As Mr. Gay said, the first year, they're going to make sure that that's taken care of, but we'll need to budget for $1,500 for every additional yeah. year to make sure that the maintenance that contract. 1500 per year for 20 years? Yes. Or for 19? Well, for 19, because they're going to give us the first year free. Right. Okay. <clears throat> we'll have this warranty in place before anybody's paid in full. Yes. I don't want to see us pay this guy. Then all of a sudden there's an the issue. Yeah. We can't get the warranty. And then we we're running yeah. back. So I'd like to see that that warranty is in a, and council looks at it. Yes. And we are covered for the final payment. Absolutely. Well, here, here's the thing with that. Having this maintenance fee, they'll be out every year. So warranties are kind of like, I got a warranty on my truck. I get free tires for life. But in order to get free tires for life, I'd spend about $5,000 a year on things they want me to do that I don't need. Yeah. Well, that's what you get in with a 20-year warranty on the roof or anything else. If you don't do these maintenance things, then what you get is they'll say, well, you didn't follow the thing, so your warranty is no good. That's why the $1,500 a year is a good investment. And uh, also, our guys, our maintenance guys don't know about that. They don't know anything about the roof. Uh, in reality, and these folks are professionals. So if they come out here every year, there'll be no arguing over whether or not the things that make that warranty sustainable were done. Oh, it's worth the fifteen hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I was surprised how it's cheap like insurance it on it, basically. Right. Yeah. But, and the company that's <laughs> providing the warranty, they've been around for a while. Yes, they've been around for a while and did a lot of work. Um uh, they'll, like they'll bankrupt and be gone a few years later. <laughs> Well, no, I, but, but see, we'll still have the warranty with the manufacturer. The manufacturer is going to be uh, either GAF or Firestone. And I know all of you yeah, have heard, yeah. heard those folks, okay. and they'll be around hopefully a while, in days where you never know. But the manufacturer will be the actual one responsible for that. So if we get into a scenario where this company, for some reason, goes away, we could hire another company who is a – representative of theirs to do that same war. Do we know if the TPO is GAF or Firestone? I'm sorry. Is the TPO by Firestone or is it by? Yeah, GAF? it's uh, they could do either one, Firestone or GAF. Now, they said right now. GAF has a better rating on their TPO. We'll use the GAF. Uh, we'll use that and, uh, and uh, get that taken care of. They said we could choose either one. We'll choose. GAF was the first one. I, I I think of Firestone. I think of tires. I think of GAF. I think of roofing systems. So that's kind of their specialty. Any more questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion? So moved. All right. 
So I have a, let me do this. A motion to accept the ACR jail only at this time with the 3% bond for the total of $214,661.31 plus adding the additional $1,500 per year for the consecutive 19 years. Do I have a motion? We need a funding source as well. And coming from? Ross, I'm sorry. You sure? It's Ross. Oh, no, not there. There's only 746000 and we've given a lot of money out of SPLOS. We'll, we'll accumulate more money as we as we go forward. That's why we need that breakdown. Is All right. An offer project? Mm -hmm. We could uh, we could bring back the recommendation, if you like, or where the funding comes from, where we bring the contract back for execution. Yeah, we can we'll do, that. do that. I just hate to see promised SPLOS money overcross and go out and wind up in a negative there yeah. before we collect our other parts. So, all right. So the motion of ACR jail only at this time in the amount of 214,661.31 plus the additional $1,500 for the next 19 consecutive years for maintenance contingent on coming out of splossed funding Ending Mr. Bill providing us with proper documentation of funds available. Do I have a motion? Second. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. And thank God I'd have to say that again. Thank you. All right. Item number three ACCG property and liability. You said, go ahead. You said uh, contingent of coming out. It's pending him giving us a. Right now, we voted to have it taken out of SPLOS as long as the money is available once he provides us with the documentation. Oh, we're saying if we can't take it out of there, we're not fixing the building. No, it'll come we'll, somewhere. Else. We'll get somewhere. Yes. Okay, thank you. Item number three, ACCG property and liability renewal contract and allow chairman to sign. Who's doing this? Okay. I don't know. I was looking at Bill, but nobody's in a hurry to talk about this because this is insurance. And as we know, we've had multiple claims this year, very expensive claims, especially with the health department and defects, the health department times two courthouse. We're still waiting on that as well as defects plus motor vehicle accidents. So we do have a significant increase proposed by ACCG. Um, the proposed amount is $547,000. Um, what was it? 275? 375. 375. I'm sorry. And are we holding these individuals liable that are wrecking the vehicles? That's the very small part I know. of our um, claims. However, we do need to look and work with the safety committee on doing a defensive driving for all employees that operate county vehicles because we do not have a defensive driving in place right that help? yes now, i'm not sure it would make a significant difference but it also teaches a lot of skills um, to those employees as well but this is not ready to vote on today right is, Beverly's working we could on this. we could vote on this however what we are doing is we are seeking other quotes to see if yeah. we might be able to find better um premiums However, I say that with caution because we do know that we've had several claims. Right. I personally would rather wait and see if we can come up with something less, but it's up to the pleasure of the board. What do y'all want to do? Table it? See what we come up with? It's fine with me. To the end of this month. End of this month. And Beverly's currently working on it. That's why correct. she's not in here. That's correct. You told me this morning she's been working on that okay. too. I'll make yep. a motion and we take it to the next meeting. Yep. I'll second it. Motion and a second. All in favor? Table. Thank you. All right. Next item is report from county administrator. Thank you, Chairman. I, I would like to take a brief moment just to read an article that was in the paper regarding, it was a letter to the editor, and it says, grateful thanks to EMS. And this was in the Vindicator on Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Dear editor, Wednesday, my wife fell and received a long and deep cut on her forehead from just about her right eyebrow to several inches into her scalp, exposing her skull, a terrible wound. I called 911 and asked for them to dispatch an ambulance to carry her to Piedmont Hospital in Noonan. We live about eight miles north of Gay, and I 
and just a few minutes, we had a firefighter, then several EMTs, and an ambulance plus a fire truck at our door. They gave my wife excellent and caring attention, made her and me less apprehensive. The ambulance driver and EMT monitored her and confronted her all the comforted her all the way to the hospital. We feel blessed to have such a caring group of EMTs and firefighters to respond that quick. We think we receive better care than if we lived in a large city. In short, I would like to thank I like I would like them to be acknowledged for their professionalism and quick work. I also understand that a lot of first responders are volunteers. A special thanks to them. Sincerely, Roy and Inez Watson, Sonoy, Georgia. So I just wanted to, we always hear about bad things, but I wanted to take a moment to thank uh, Fire and EMT for what they do and let you all know that that is in the paper. Um, we had a mandatory pre-bid meeting on June 5th for Strickland Town Road and River Cove. The bid opening for those will be June 15th. That was a mandatory meeting and all the questions that were asked have been answered to the vendors. Um, there was also a mandatory pre-bid meeting on June 12th for Dukes Waddell. Those uh, questions are in the process of being answered and sent out and that bid opening is on June 22nd. Uh, staff is currently working on the RFP for the tax building. I got a wonderful report for Peaches in the Pine, which I'm not sure if one of the commissioners wants to um, expand on that, but there was an excess of 1,400 folks there, lots of food trucks, disc golf, um, very good time. Everything went very smooth, public works. Um, they wanted to express their thanks to public works as well as fire and emergency services for being there. And that's all I have. All right. Any commissioners have any questions for the administrator? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll move to the next item. That's report from county commissioners, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, I'd just like to thank all the county employees and staff for the work they've done, and that's all I have. Commissioner Plant? I just want to share with uh, West Georgia Technical is uh, offering summer adult classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at Greenville. Uh, location 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, for more information, this flyer has been made available that um, that gives additional information and just encourage anyone that could participate or has need of to please do so. And we thank West Georgia for offering this um, for adult education. That's it for me. All right. Commissioner King. Um, Clarify what I was asking for earlier about a line item so it didn't sound like I was confused or didn't know what I was talking about. What I had asked for and administrator said, yes, that could be added as a line item is I know it goes in general fund, but if we receive a big check, all we see is the balance of the general fund. Since we get it quarterly, we discussed that. I don't think you was here, but um, we get it quarterly. It'd be nice if on the bottom of this sheet right here, it just shows us what the, the amount was that was deposited. Can do that. That way we, you know, we can keep a track of whether you think the amount's gone down, gone up, and so forth without having to call and go, hey, can you tell me what we got? You know, just kind of, it helps us remind us that it came in. Sure. You know, and and that's that. all. I didn't mean to make it okay. difficult. But that's what I was referring to. That's not difficult at all. Um, I'd like to mention that the uh, Tower House Brewery over in Gay are going to be doing the first time ever a professional fireworks uh, performance on July 1st. Um, they're going to have live music. There's, they're often to local businesses want to come out and purchase uh, uh, tables for parties of six, parties of eight in advance. There's things that come along with that VIP table and so forth. And that's probably just to help fund the fireworks, but it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a big fireworks show and a lot of fun. It's all family uh, oriented. So uh, if you want to spread that word out, you can. And, um, Again, I would just hope that we're following up on these deep dirt roads and and, and getting them ready because it's still that's the number one thing on the citizens' minds is their dirt roads. So, uh, other than that, thanks to all the employees and all the staff for everything they've been doing for us. Thank you, Commissioner Worsley. Just like to thank all the employees and the staff for what they're doing. Really appreciate it. That's all I have. All right, and. Uh, Manchester is actually having a July 3rd annual uh, firework. They have actually 
bumped it up this year, as I was told. It's going to be something that they haven't had before. Uh, fireworks are going to be probably twice as big as they have been over the last few years. They wanted to extend the invitation to the entire county to come out. It is free entry to everyone. Um, they're going to have multiple music uh, there this year, uh, different genres of music. So they want everybody to come out and enjoy that. They've increased the number of vendors um, that will be there. So there's more things for your children to do, for you to do, um, and more types of food as well. So that's July 3rd in Manchester at the Old Mill. And they did want to request that everybody just come and enjoy themselves. That's all that I have. Um, next item is report from county attorney. All right. Uh, next item, executive session. Do we have need? Yes, for all four areas. All four areas. All right. We have uh, future meetings and notices, June 19th, 2023. We will be, the offices will be closed for Juneteenth holiday. June 27th, 2023, our regular meeting at 6 p.m. Do I have a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of litigation, personnel, real estate, and tax matters? So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We are in at 10.05. Do I have a motion to go back into regular session? So moved. have a motion. Do I have a second? second? All in favor? Motion carries. We're back in executive session. No action was taken. And I mean, we're back in regular session. No motion was taken. No action was taken in executive session. I'm getting tongue twisted because I'm trying to get out of here. All right. So we do have a couple of things that need to be voted on. The first is a motion to fund tax commissioner's office as discussed in executive session. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second? Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. Next item is to authorize staff to seek RFP for a portion of County Line Road. Um, extending 1,050 feet. Do I have a motion? Motion. Have, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. All right. I'm staying. I'm Is there anything staying. else to come before the board? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carries. We're adjourned.